I owe a lot of gratitude to my father and I probably and my mother and father but I probably haven't told him uh, half enough and I should tell him a lot more of what he what he has done for me and what he means what he means to me in terms of everywhere when I was a young fella before I could even grow up he was bringing me everywhere with, and I always bring the hurling ball with me and I suppose that developed my passion for hurling and obviously I don't remember him playing for Limerick but I've seen the I've seen the videos Jim Troy today playing in his 23rd championship match Joe Hegarty under the dropping ball, batting it down, keeping it away from John Troy. Really fired up for the occasion, making sure he wasn't too. Done his left hand side. Did well to come back from a career threatening cruciate ligament injury back in October 1992. He's been absolutely br brilliant to me, and also my mother also comes from a, a, a very big sporting family um, from Kilcormack and Offaly. And, uh, yeah, they've been absolutely brilliant to me, and as I said, I probably don't tell them half enough. But uh, this, like this, this, this award that I have won wouldn't have been possible without without their without them looking after me over the years. And like my mother is is over and under me in terms of in in the lead up to games and making sure that the dinners are all the dinners are all healthy and that I'm that there's nice snacks in the fridge and that everything is okay. Even on the morning of a game, like I'd be quite superstitious myself, but she it probably comes from her because. I'm not allowed to leave the house on the morning of a game without without the holy water coming out. And she blesses my hurley, she blesses my gear, she blesses the bag, she blesses myself, and uh, a hug and a kiss before I go off. And uh, they're all they're all special moments, you know. And it's just such a pity that they weren't able to go to games this year because um, because of how the year went, both both on a team level and a personal level. But uh, hopefully they'll be able to they'll be able to go back sooner rather than later. But yeah, obviously I owe them I owe them so much, so so much. It's funny how things go. Like obviously lockdown happened and. Uh, I've three I've three sisters and a brother, and only one has moved out, but she only moved out recently. So we were all kind of at home over lockdown, and uh, it's funny how things go. Like you know, you, you think when you're when when we weren't in lockdown, say the things that we have that we have started doing over lockdown that we didn't do before. That you think, why were we never doing that? Just simple things like sitting down for a dinner together. Like we never did that because there's always someone running a race in summer. There's always somebody at training, or my mother's dropping somebody to train, or collecting from school, or something like that. And I suppose life has slowed down over the last number of months. Um, unfortunately due to this horrible virus that we're living in but I suppose all you can do is make the best of it. My brother Dermot and uh, my youngest sister Grace like all I did over lockdown was poke around with them just kept sharp by poking around with them. My sister Kira is, is it helps out my mother in terms of cooking dinners and my, my other sister Anya who has moved out and isn't at home as much but she also she's great for organising the parties and stuff like that after the game so everybody plays a role I suppose in, in, in making sure that I'm ready for matches which is a bit which sounds a bit selfish out of me, but I suppose they're all they're like they're all huge hurling fans as well. Like all I ever wanted to do was play for Limerick when I grew up. I never thought of winning all Ireland's or anything like that, or hurlers a year, or all stars, anything like that. All I ever wanted to do was emulate my father and play for Limerick. And I suppose I was lucky enough. TJ Ryan gave me my opportunity in 2016 after we won the under 21 All Ireland with John in 2015. I still remember my debut. It's one of my favourite moments to this day. We were beaten on the same day, but we played Tipperary Blow and Hurlers and. Myself and Richie English, uh, maybe a couple more, uh, made our debuts that day. And I suppose it's mad to think that that's five years ago now when I got into my sixth year as a Limerick senior hurler because time is flying, I suppose. And uh, I suppose like you just have to, you you have to realise that you don't you don't have too long at the at the top at the top level of any sport, you know. And like before you know it, as I said, going into my sixth year as a senior hurler now. Another couple of years, you know, you, you, not many, not many progress on past into double digits. So you just have to make the best of it. You just have to make the best of it um, when you're in there. And we're lucky enough to be involved as players, to be involved in an unbelievable setup um, that John has obviously created over the last number of years and has some special people involved with us. Um, Caroline obviously occurred get, and Paul Kinnark and Mikey Kiley, they all get their, they've all got praise and, and, and um, mention over the last number of months and rightly so because John has created a, a super team that we all, we all that we all just love being involved in and I suppose we can't wait to get back training we're obviously not allowed to train at the moment but I'm just so looking forward to the 2021 season whether that be behind closed doors or not I just 2020 was obviously a very difficult year and everybody had their own difficulties and none, none more so than my own I thought it was just so hard to be motivated in terms of training and stuff for such a long period over there when the championship nobody knew where the championship was going to hit or not so I'm just looking forward to the 2021 season getting back getting the show back on the road again <laughs> He's an exceptional athlete you know he played a lot of football before he got involved in the hurling, so you know he's a, a midfielder that. So he was used to going back to box to box as a footballer. So bringing that energy and bringing that you know yardage that you cover, it makes it really really difficult for a defender to 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 defend. And do I stick? Do I go? Do I stick? Do I go? That question, that dilemma, is constantly being asked of the defender because the defender doesn't want to leave an acre of space behind for another forward to come into 
so it's a really difficult uh, dilemma for the for the uh, for the half for the half back. Um, but listen, it's a team game. It's a team sport, and you know, whilst Garod's performances were you know of a very high caliber during the course of the year, he was on a team where the team were performing at a very high level, and that's what makes it really possible for a player to to excel to those levels of performance. You know, Limerick continue on. That was a pass from Darrow Donovan, and that ball is going inside the post over the crossbar for Garod Hegarty's fourth point of the match. Some days the ball runs for you and some days it doesn't and I, I, I just know that that happens, you know, and I suppose it did run for me quite a lot this year, which is great, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's a lot, it is a lot of hard work and like we just, we we focus on training so much in terms of the movement of the ball and giving the ball to the man in the best position and I know it sounds simple, but or I know it sounds, it's it's probably not what you would expect, but that's all it is, it's just based on hard work and giving the ball to the man in the best position, as I said, it does sound simple, but we just working it over and over and over again inside and training and you you just expect to bring it to um, game day then when you have a game. So um, obviously our performances this level were were quite were quite good, and I, I believe that they improved as the year went on. The standards for for player of his caliber and his position, you know, of what he's expected to achieve and what he's expected to deliver on. So you know, we're constantly challenging the players to to try and you know supersede those 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 levels of performance, and you know they're they're challenging themselves too to achieve those levels of performance. So it doesn't surprise me. Uh, is there room for more improvement? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And he should be chasing that down now, going, going on in his career, knowing that he can achieve this level of performance consistently. He can look to go even higher. Again, it's the Morrissey Hegarty combination that is killing Waterford. These players have been playing with each other for so many years now, from a very young age. So they do have a great understanding of each other's movement and each other's, you know, strengths and. Uh, you know, predictability as to what a player might do with a ball once he gets on the ball. Tom Morrissey is the number 12. Ball inside Prasco Road, Hegarty bearing down on goal. Decided not to test out Stephen O'Keefe again. Do you also have that coupled in with, you know, the work that they're doing in training every night, every week, and, you know, the challenge that's been put to them in that environment uh, to do what they're doing to a higher standard repetitively. So, you know, it's a combination of that, all the different factors. And I suppose there's one other uh, factor that allows that to happen in my mind, and that's the enjoyment and the fun aspect of the game. And that's never lost, really. You know, I think if you are enjoying your hurling and enjoying your, your, your work with your teammates, it'll come out in the performance of the team. And I think that's one thing that our team really had this year was a tremendous sense of enjoyment privilege to be playing and fun when we were at it and I thought that was exemplified in our performances during the course of the year. John is our manager, John's our leader, he keeps us grounded, he keeps us driven. Without him we wouldn't have the success that we have achieved over the last number of years and as I said he deserves huge credit for what he has done with us but I'm sure he'll keep, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he's already looking forward, he's, he, John doesn't look back too often you know by the time you might analyse the game on a Tuesday night after a Sunday and then that's it, after that then you're looking forward to the next game or the next training session and as I said, we place huge emphasis on our on our um, work rate at training and try to bring that to games. And John is heavily involved in that. Let me tell you, and I'm sure you can imagine you can imagine he's he's quite vocal as a person and uh, he lets his feelings be known when he's not happy with the standards of training. But as a as a group of players, we have obviously matured over the last number of years. And although we are, I suppose our average age is 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 youngish, but we are there's a fair group of players that are there a, a good number of years now. So we know we know what's required at training. And uh, and at matches and I suppose um, with all those experiences you just you just try and keep improving and the more experience you get the more um, able you are to adapt to the different situations that do come about in games you know because every game is different and every team that you play is different. I have a PlayStation. That's one thing that kept me going over lockdown. I suppose when I played a, good, I played a nice bit of FIFA and Call of Duty and uh, it's all about finding out what works best for you. It's something that I would have struggled before with is is how to switch off before a game. I always found it tough. I'd always be thinking about the game during the week and you don't want to be burning. Uh, nervous energy, I suppose, in the lead up to a game because it's obviously you you could you may be flat then on the day. So I've a couple of dogs. I love going for a walk, a walk with a dog. Obviously, when restrictions, five k restrictions aren't there, I love going down to, for a walk on the beach in Ballybunion. And I, I like an old game of golf when possible. Obviously, you can't be playing golf in the lead up to a game. But my girlfriend has two dogs, Hardy and Luna, and I'm not sure are they mine or not. And then I've, we have three at home myself. Teddy, Teddy will be the main fella. But yeah, look, I've 
plenty of things to be doing. As I said, I do have plenty of spare time. I'm a huge sports fan. I love watching. I love watching all types of sports. And sport is always, sport is always changing. It's always improving. There's always new tactics. Uh, there's always people with new ideas coming in. And uh, even if you look at soccer nowadays, the the uh, importance is put on and uh, put on holding the ball and keeping possession. Even goalies nowadays, once upon a time, a goalie had to save the ball, and that was it. They didn't have to. They didn't have to use their feet. Whereas nowadays, all the top goalies in, in soccer are so important in keep holding on to the ball and being able to pass it well. So it's the same in Hurland. Lucky enough to be a teacher in Desmond College in Newcastle West as well. And obviously, um, the hours the hours there aren't too taxing on the body, you know. And um, uh, again, I'm looked after so well there by the staff, by the staff and principal Vornean as well there. So um, yeah, as I said, it's 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 just it's a privilege to be in this position. The performance in the in the conditions in Cork versus Tipperary in the Munster Championship that was extraordinary. I thought, you know, by both teams really, to be honest with you. But we we, we just mar we were marginally better on the day. It was horrific, right? And you know, the, the quality of the striking of the ball on the day, the quality of the fielding in on the day, the quality of the touch, the pickups, the hand passes, you know, the the runs off the shoulder. It was an incredible performance in those conditions. It was one of those days you just had to embrace it. You know, if you if you went out with the, the, the idea that this was just a terrible thing for us to have to endure, uh, you know, it was going to be torture. And, you know, we had to, and we said it before the game, let's embrace this. Let's really take it on for the challenge that it is. And, you know, how satisfying, you know, was it afterwards to have come through it and to have produced the performance like they did on the day. That, for me, was one of great satisfaction, even though it was the coldest, most miserable journey home that I'll ever uh, endure. You know, I was fro I, I actually wasn't right for about three days after it. I was so frozen to the core. It was incredible. It was wicked. A lot of the highlights that, that flashed into my mind weren't actually from the field. Like uh, one of the, my favourite highlights was obviously today the All Ireland, but the morning of the All Ireland, I'm sure some people had seen it on social media in my club. A lot of my the, the, the members of my club and my family and f close friends lined up along the street just outside my house, uh, wishing me luck and flags and uh, clapping and, uh, on the way out to the train station. My mother was dropping me down to the train station half nine on the Sunday morning of the game of the All Ireland. You know, things like that stay with you so much and. Like some great moments, obviously, are after we won the All Ireland uh, this year on the field, and obviously we went back into the dressing room then, and you just like we we were in the dressing room for a couple of hours after the game. Like I'd say, the 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 lads that we were getting the food off, and the cleaners were freaking out because we we weren't getting out because once that moment is gone and you're gone out of the stadium, you know that's kind of it. And they're the real, real special moments like that it makes all the hard training that you do in November, December, January in a normal year, I suppose, in the wind and rain out in Rack Hill, which is which is a, a, a strange location because it's never warm, ever. It's always freezing cold and raining out there and that makes it all worthwhile, I suppose, that those couple of hours after the game. It's great moments. There wasn't that many occasions for anybody to celebrate anything last year and we had that moment in the dressing room after the All-Ireland, you know, when we were, you know, in our bubble and, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of emotion was probably uh, released in that environment, you know, during that time because it, it was pent up in everybody, you know, it probably is still, a lot of it is pent up there. I think that's something that'll need an outlet when we're finished, you know, dealing with the pandemic is giving people an opportunity to, to get that emotion out of themselves. And what a greater place that you could do it in, you know, in Turles or in Crow Park or Parky Keeve and let people show their real passion and emotion. And I can't wait to see the crowds back in, in the grounds again and supporting the team because we need them back, you know. That's what's really missing from our game right now. It's super, super important that we get the fans back into our stadia. And, uh, yeah, please God, 2021 will see that happen. That's one huge goal that I have this year is to get the club back up into the intermediate ranks where we should be and, and progress. Um, but I suppose, look, as a young fella, as I said, I, I love sports and I'd watch all sorts of sports and I'd always see um, people winning different awards, individual awards in all different sports. And my, my motto and my advice to people is that somebody has to win them. So why not you? My, I'm a huge believer in that anything is anything is is possible to achieve if you put it, if you're willing to put in the hard work. You know, I hate I hate excuses. There's 168 hours in the week. If you really want to do something, you will find the time. You will find the time to put in the work. And as I said, there as I always say, there's no secret formula to success. It's just putting in the work. Whether that be studying to be a doctor or being a rugby player for Ireland or whatever it is, if you're willing to put in the work. Anything is anything is achievable. I know that is a bit of a cliche, but it is so so true. Like as I said, 168 hours in the week. If you really want to do something, you will find the time. You know, you anyone that wants to make excuses can make excuses. You won't make excuses if you really want something. The amount of untapped potential in people, I believe, is is huge. You know, a lot of people unfortunately live in their comfort zone and they're happy enough to just go along in a job that they maybe not like Monday to Friday and get to the weekend and wasting their life away. You know, wishing their life away even. You know, so. Um, 
as I said, if you really want to do something, you will put in the time, you will put in the work, and I'm a huge, huge believer in that. 